Okay, in this tutorial, we are going to see how we can use another feature of the S3 or the Simple Storage Service in AWS to host a website directly. And so AWS S3 has a functionality for direct website hosting. And we are going to just quickly show how you can set that up. And this is uh, more for hosting of websites that are primarily uh, made up of static page elements so you can see in this diagram here we have our bucket and we have things like video files image files html css javascript these types of files that make up primarily static websites are a good candidate for uh, using s3 to host them and so if you have a website that has any type of uh, client server interaction or any type of authentication that has to take place uh, from a user perspective, then this isn't a good use case for S3. We, we will talk about uh, ways that you can host and set up those types of websites in other tutorials. But for this, if you have like landing pages, uh, promotional pages that you might want to host, if you have uh, websites that are going to be primarily static in nature, S3 is a great candidate for hosting these types of sites because of the built-in features for high availability, uh, built-in features for being able to handle uh, so many number of different requests without having any type of service interruptions or anything like that. That's pretty much how Amazon has built the S3 service basically to allow it to be able to handle a large number of requests from your end users of your content that is stored in these S3 buckets. And so so it makes S3 a great uh, service to use for not only just storing and hosting things like videos and images that you want to include on your website, but also uh, for just hosting an entire website if your website is made up of HTML, uh, CSS, and things like that. So the first thing we want to do is just jump over to the AWS Management Console, and we will want to go over to the S3 service, which is down under Storage. And we want to go ahead and create a bucket and we're going to want to have a bucket that allows for public access because the files that we're going to put in the bucket are going to be publicly accessible because they're pretty much going to be made up of the different uh, pages that make up our uh, web application. And so we want to make sure that we have a bucket that is going to be uh, publicly accessible and have all of the, the different files that we want that make up our website included in that bucket. So the first thing we want to do is create a bucket and we want to give the bucket some sort of a unique name. So we're just going to say and we want to choose the region that the bucket is in. And on the page for the public access, we're going to want to remove the checkboxes because we are going to want this bucket to be uh, publicly accessible in terms of the content of this bucket. So we want to just uncheck these uh, public access settings for the bucket. So we can leave everything on the previous screen as is, but on this screen we want to uncheck these uh, new options that Amazon has put in place and click next. And we just want to review everything so we can leave the majority of the features uh, set to the defaults. So we can leave versioning turned on. We don't need server access logging and things like that. Tagging is always going to be optional. So, I mean, you can include tags if you want. But the main thing is we're going to want to create a bucket that is going to be publicly accessible so that we can allow for the content in the bucket to be received. We just want to click on create bucket. And once we have our bucket created, we want to then go and upload our content onto our bucket that is going to make up our static website. And so if we have our uh, different HTML pages, we want to upload that content. So we want to upload the content here and we can uh, drag and drop the files or we can uh, browse to the files by clicking on add files. So we want to just uh, go down to our index.html file. So I have an index.html file here. I have a uh, style sheet 
in here as well. So we want to just go ahead and add all of the content for our static website uh, directly up onto our our S3 bucket so we don't want to zip the files or anything like that we can just uh, add all of our uh, HTML uh, links for all of our pages and style sheets and images and videos and everything up on S3 directly and we want to hit next and we do want to grant uh, public access to our objects so we want to switch this over to grant and so that our objects can have public read access and we want to click next and we want to just choose the standard storage class for these objects for now and click next and then we can review everything and we can go ahead and click upload and so once we have everything uploaded we have all of our uh, pages that make up our static website, all of the images and everything that we need to reference, all of the videos. Then we want to go over to the properties tag and we want to select the option for static website hosting. So we want to select this option here and we want to click on the bubble that says use this bucket to host a website. And once you do that, you'll have the option to put in the uh, page to your index document and any error document that you have. So we'll go ahead and put uh, index.html as kind of the page to our home page. And we'll just leave the error document blank for now because I don't have one. So we just need the, the link to whatever is going to be the home page of our of our website, that's what we want to put in here for our index, index document. And we want to go ahead and click on save. And once we save that, if we go back over to our static website hosting option, you'll notice that Amazon has immediately provision an endpoint for our static website that we can then use to distribute for uh, our end users to be able to access our website. So if you go ahead and click on that endpoint, that'll take you to your static website and all of the different pages that you uh, have in place. You should see everything uh, corresponding to the files that you've uploaded onto your S3 bucket. And so this way you can easily set it up and use S3 as a uh, service that you can directly use to host static websites, any kind of uh, landing pages, any kind of promotional websites you want to use, or maybe even just the home page of your application that would then potentially link to other uh, pages that may maybe have more uh, authentication or client service interaction. But using S3 to handle the bulk of the requests that are coming in uh, that you want to serve for your application. So in another tutorial, we'll see how we can uh, set up static website hosting with S3 to host uh, content using your own domain, maybe a domain name that you've uh, bought in Route 53. You can also use your own custom domain name with your static website that you host as well. And so you can do that in conjunction with the Route 53 service that allows you to be able to set up and uh, buy purchase domain names, set up routing and set up all of the different uh, C name and uh, different record types for your domain. So we'll do that and look at how we can do that and another tutorial but in this tutorial the thing that you want to take away is just remember the use case that you can use s3 as a uh, landing place or a service that can be used to just uh, completely host a website right out of the box and so you can do a cost uh, calculation and see you know if this is something that can be useful for your organization if you can cut some costs and save some money by hosting some of the page elements and maybe stripping them away from uh, being hosted directly on your EC2 instances and uh, moving them over to S3 for more high availability and more potential cost savings uh, where applicable. So that'll conclude this tutorial. Uh, check back next time and we'll, we'll look at some of the other aspects and things that you can do with the S3 service.